on to the asylum. They said anywhere between 10,000 and 13,000 deaths. We relied on restraint, punishment, seclusion as our main forms of treatment. They were frightening in the fatality rates. Now we're hoping that you'll come out and speak with us while we're here. I am going to actually lay on the slab and Dave is gonna lock me in the cooler. Wow. Whew, I'm getting so nauseous. It lit up green for yes. Sounded like a female said, I know. Whoa. Dude, this is f***ing wild. I did not expect this when we walked in here. Sitting atop a large hill spanning nearly 100 acres in Ararat, Victoria, Australia, sits a massive 64 building compound. It was placed in this rural town for a reason. Two hours from Melbourne, away from prying eyes, this was Victoria's first lunatic asylum. Now, it sits abandoned a tourist destination, and is widely considered to be Australia's most haunted psychiatric hospital. But is it true? Do the ghosts of thousands of patients and staff still haunt this asylum? Tonight, we're gonna find out. Dave, we're here in the state of Victoria in Australia, and tonight we're going to investigate what is said to be Australia's most haunted asylum. Yes, we are. We've heard stories about this place because coming from the United States, we have many asylums there, ones that we have even investigated, but this place has all of those same elements of all of the asylums that we remember in America. The lobotomies, the inhumane treatment, the things that a lot of different communities and cultures have grappled with over the years and that just generated into very interesting and at times extreme paranormal activity. Yeah, this place is unlike any other one that we've done back home and I'm interested to see what it has to offer tonight. And as the sun is going down right now, it's only going to get creepier. So let's find out some more information about this place so we know what's in store for us tonight. Let's do it. Let's see who we can find. Let's do it. So Aradale opened in 1867 and it worked right through to around 1995. In those early years, it was very difficult. We were working in a time where we didn't have bathrooms within the wards. Uh, they came much later on. We also didn't have electricity. We certainly didn't have penicillin and antibiotics. Uh, we had uh, quite a number of serious diseases sweep through this facility more than once. Uh, we were well and truly before a time where we had medications to treat psychiatric illnesses. And of course, this is a, a psychiatric hospital, a lunatic asylum back in the day lunatic being um, a medical term in the 1800s. We relied on restraint, punishment, seclusion uh, as our main forms of treatment. And some of the treatments that we were employing chemically, they were, they were pretty fatal. We were using a lot of mercury in our medications and things like that. And they were all quite, quite toxic. They were frightening. In, in the fatality rates. But it wasn't just disease or the treatments that made Airedale so dangerous. The horror of this place drove many patients to violence, as life at the asylum slowly caused them to unravel more and more each day. Yeah, there were, there were quite a lot of patient um, on patient uh, homicides. We have uh, one instance between uh, two male inmates, Spellacy and Forrester, uh, they were actually really great friends and had been for quite some time and they worked on the farm part of the asylum. But then this one day, they're not quite sure what happened, but uh, Spellacy put a shovel through Forrester's head. 
Some people were dropped off at the asylum simply because their family didn't want them, and there was no other place to take them. Unruly children, unwanted spouses, impoverished people could all find themselves at Airedale, even though by today's standards they were completely sane and didn't need any treatment. But once delivered, they were trapped here. The sadness was so palpable that even the staff could find themselves swept away in the despair, trapped in these walls. I do believe that one superintendent in particular, Dr. William Mullins, I I think he probably did suffer melancholia anyway, uh, so he probably wasn't in the best frame of mind to work here. Uh, when he did get his hands on prussic acid, which is cyanide, I believe his words were that he wanted to get rid of a dog that was keeping him up at night. Um, so they just dispensed it, and of course then he consumed it. In the almost 130 years Airedale Lunatic Asylum was open, it's estimated between 10,000 and 13,000 people lost their lives here, with that much death in one place. It's easy to see why so many people have paranormal experiences here at Airedale. I absolutely believe Airedale's haunted because I have experienced so many things here in the past four years of working here. Uh, I've seen full body apparitions, I've seen shadow people, uh, I saw a a near on nine foot tall woman run through the hallway from the women's ward through to the administration building. So yeah, I, I've just experienced so much. It is definitely haunted and intelligently. But as we know, you can't only focus on those who lost their lives here because the energy of the brutality that was seen here could still be trapped here as well, ready to replay itself when the moment is right. Uh, you can certainly feel some areas of the, the asylum have more of a, a sadness about them, uh, whereas others, other areas have a tension to them, and other areas still have this element of fear, which is, you can't really explain why you feel this sense of fear, um, but it, it could have been that fear and dread that a patient perhaps felt because of what that space was used for and what they knew that they were going to face when they entered into that area, particularly treatment zones where people were having electroconvulsive therapy and, and things like that. It would have been quite, quite a terrifying ordeal. When we arrived, we were told by many of the staff that one of those places is the men's infirmary, and not many of them like to go inside this building. It said something angry and aggressive lives there, and one tour guide named Jasmine was alone in here when she captured this picture of someone watching her on the other end of the hall. Could this be the same spirit that's known to be aggressive in here? And if so, what could be causing that aggression? I believe that there we've got some spirits that are genuinely trapped here, perhaps because of the treatments that they underwent, perhaps because of the trauma that they had, perhaps because of how lost they were, perhaps because they were completely dumped by their families and literally died without a name or a birthday. But then I think we've got a whole heap of other spirits here that stay here, not because they're trapped, but that they feel a sense of obligation to those spirits that are tortured and trapped. They are not trapped here. They know where we live. <laughs> um, and, you know, they, they can go wherever they like, whenever they like. Di and Jasmine and so many other people have come to Airedale and left with a life-changing paranormal experience. And now feel a connection to this asylum where so many horrible things happened, with the hope that the people who lived the tragedy of Airedale aren't forgotten. When I first started working here, we used a spirit box, but we never really used a portal or anything. And spirit boxes are so hard to understand. So we started using a portal uh, because it clears things up, but it was disturbing to me because we had this symphony which sounded like about 300 people talking all at once saying, help me, help us, help me, help us. And the more you slowed the recording down to listen to it more carefully, the more traumatic it sounded. And so we started prodding, you know, how can we help? How can we help? Because we don't know how to help their spirits, for goodness sake. But basically they just want to tell their story. They do. And they can take a long time to tell their story. Sometimes it can take a whole a couple of years for one person to tell their story and it's less than a couple of paragraphs, but 
yeah, we give them that opportunity and I think they enjoy that. The vibe here in four years has changed from when I first started working here. We still have some really mean spirits around here and we don't try and connect with them too much. Um, but we also have some, I think, that really appreciate our presence. And that's what's important to remember as we go into this investigation tonight. The history and hauntings of places like this can be terrifying. But when Airedale Asylum speaks, it's to help us learn from the sins of the past. I believe it's important to rehash these historical events and treatments and how poorly we performed and how poorly we treated people. And that unsugarcoated dark history, the reality of what psychiatric care was like in the 1800s and even right through the 1900s, in fact, you know, we were not performing well right up until the 1970s in all reality, simply because a lot of these people um, died as a consequence of their being um, committed here. And their deaths are not in vain if we keep talking about it, because we're reminding people of not just how poorly we did. I'd like to think that in another hundred years, we can look back at today and go, oh gee, wasn't it brutal? Look, look how far we've come. Uh, I really think by talking about then, we can remind ourselves that we do still have a long way to go in psychiatric care. We still have a lot of research to do and we still have a lot in our delivery of care. With the sheer size of this asylum and the darkness descending over it, the atmosphere is already chilling. And we'll be sharing Airedale tonight with Adelaide Haunted Horizons and Amy's Crypt who will each be investigating and making their own videos. So make sure you head over to their channels and subscribe as well. Amy and Jared will be investigating the matron's quarters, while Allison and Cag will be starting in the women's ward. Our plan is to start in the morgue which is in a separate building behind the ward buildings. But Di informs us the last ghost tour of the night is currently in that building. So she takes us to the men's infirmary to watch out the window and wait for the tour to leave. Okay, head down the mortuary right now. Okay. Which means as soon as they leave, it's free for the rest of the night. Oh, perfect. I can't actually stand in with you guys, but you are free to watch them out the window and check out the hears what we should like, but I'm gonna stand outside. You don't like it in here? No. Okay. This is the men's infirmary. No, I don't really like it in here. We were so focused on the morgue, we'd forgotten all about this building where the tour staff believes someone angry and aggressive resides. So we decide to set up here for a few minutes while we wait for the morgue to be free. And it doesn't take long for the paranormal activity in the men's infirmary to begin. Maybe like right here. Whoa. Run bullet. Camera should have got it. I'm not sure if that was the rim bullet. That was the Mel. That it was, was the Mel. Of course. I got it though on that one. Is there someone in here with us? Dude. Something is slamming in this room right here. Yeah, I heard that. What was it? I don't know. There's nothing in there. This was what area? This was the men's infirmary. I'm gonna set ghost tube right here. Um, the tours are gonna be done here very shortly. So she looked out the window to see if the tour had been done in the morgue so we could go in. And she said, 
you, you're more than welcome to watch the window for them to leave, but I'm not staying in here. So something really freaks her out about this place. Yeah. And as we were setting up, the mail meter just went off. Right as you were saying that, I'm 99% sure I heard a male voice down here. Whoa. Nice. Is there somebody in that room right there? Gentlemen, we've come a long way from America to come here to talk to you. So if you're here, let us know. You can set this off. You can set this one off. Did someone die in these rooms here? I'm gonna set up the flux here. Take it into that room. This one? Yeah. So we're setting up the flux right now and it is actually a pyramid shaped device that also determines proximity kind of like the REM pod and the mel meter. But this particular one has directionality as well. One side is green and one side is red. So you can either have someone just touch it for touching its sake or you could ask yes, no questions if you identify to whoever you're speaking to on how to do that. But Whoa. Christian. The uh, pyramid thing went off. Did you catch it? Tree. Yeah, tree. And it said Christian right after it went off. Is that your name? Is your name Christian? Or are you a Christian? Gentlemen, are you in here with us? Outside, is it? No. When we walked over here, it wasn't windy at all. Uh -uh. If that's you slamming something, can you do it again for us so we can hear it? Can you see that blinking light in the room there? If you can, can you try and touch it? It'll let us know that you're here. Is this yours? It is what ours? Which one of these are you talking about? Touch one of them to let us know which one you're speaking of. Whoa. What is that? I don't know. Okay, that could be what that is. This window pane is loose. Is that you? That wasn't me. But I think the sound that we're hearing in this room is just pressure of, even though it's not windy, it's just pressure. This is all I did. I'm even closer. Yeah, I didn't even get this close. That wasn't me. Wow. 
I'll step out of your room, okay? Okay. So we were able to debunk that sound that we were hearing. The window pane in that, in that room is loose. So if there's any sort of air pressure or air movement through that corridor between the buildings there, it's gonna push that window and rattle it. Just as I, when I touched the window and it rattled. How many? Same thing. If you're here, can you go down this hallway for us? Can you walk down this hallway so we can see you? Can you tell us what your name is, please? Recently. You wanna pop the action cam in this doorway and do a little out there? Mm -hmm. Well, did you get that? Yeah. Thank you very much for doing that. You know what's weird? Can you try it one more time? It's like every time we turn our backs. Yeah. That's, that's why I want to do what I just said. Yeah. Do you need the top one? Damn it. God damn it. It was my fault. I pushed down on the thing, and I was... Oh. Thank you. Did. Did. It said did. Dude, it said did. Wow. Thank you. That's amazing. Is that you doing that? So, you understand we're not here to hurt you, right? We're nice guys. We just want to talk. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is it? It's just like went all the way to purple. Yeah. Thank you so much. If that's you doing that, can you knock that over? Can you push that over? It would be the first time anyone's ever done that for us. In the madness of me dropping the battery for the action camera, everything went crazy. Not only was the millimeter alarming, but we also captured a man's voice that we can't explain. It wasn't us, and the tour is now gone. So we are far away from any other living people. Take a listen, and if you can make out what it's saying, tell us in the comments below. So you understand we're not here to hurt you, right? So you understand we're not here to hurt you, right? Can you try and- Why did you come? Try and push that over. We'd love it if you could do that for us. Come on, you can do it. Bedroom. Go for it, push it. Dude, bedroom. This was the sick ward. I'm sure this I'm sure those rooms back there were bedrooms. Probably. Maybe they weren't, but that's kind of weird. Do you want us to get out of your bedroom? If you want us to get out of your room and you don't like us being in here, make that go all the way up again. All the way. All the way. Touch it stronger. Make it red. That's absolutely nuts. Yeah. 
Are you happy that somebody is just here to talk to you? Are you upset that we're in here talking to you? Someone's mad that we're here, man. Someone is pissed that we're here. If you're upset, knock that over for us and we'll leave. If you're... That's it. If you're upset that we're here and you want us to leave, knock that over so we know. Knife. Knife. Dude. Are you going to stab us? Are you going to hurt us? The triangle. It lit up green. Yeah. For yes. Yeah. The flex just lit up green for yes back in that room. Push it over. Throw it at us. How, how about I use this box right here? Can you speak to me through this? Chains. Careful, careful. Oh, you got the battery pack? Yeah. Okay. Whoa, it just said leave. It did? Yeah. Do you want us to leave? Did it just say yeah? Yeah, I think so. Are you mad that I'm getting closer? Yeah. you. Wow. And that, I think it just said F them. Push it over. Who is it that keeps trying to hurt the tour guides here? Where are you? Where'd you go? It's interesting, it quit doing that when you got closer. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna run from you. I know there are some people that come through here that might run when you start making stuff happen, but we're not gonna run. You're gonna have to really make something happen to scare us out of here. Hiding. Hiding. We know you're hiding. You're afraid of us, aren't you? You're just, you're scared of us, aren't you? Did I just say yes? Oh, I wasn't paying attention. We've heard that there is something here that can get pretty nasty, that there are some nasty spirits here. Have you ever tried to hurt someone? Granddaughter. Do you want to hurt us? It sounded like it said correct and then yes. Really? Yeah. 
I'm gonna try something real quick. Okay. I just wanna set this here. Passing through. creepy down here. Yeah, it is. If there are any patients, reach out and talk to us. What? There's a box in my hand here. You can use it to speak to me. Can you tell me where we are right now? Is he dead? Not sure. No. Help. If you're back in the infirmary there, the hospital, follow us down the hall here. Say what? Sound like a little kid went, Dad. Oh. Is there a child here that's lost? Our walk down the hall lasted eight minutes, and it seems the further we got from the room where the Melmeter is, the less interaction we had through the spirit box. Also, the entire time we were outside of this room, the REM function on the Melmeter did not trigger once, and the ghost tube didn't say a single word. This leads us to believe there really is intelligent interaction going on, because if the equipment was being affected by some naturally explainable interference, it would keep triggering, whether we're in the room or not. So the question is, what will happen when we return to this room? Are you mad that we're here? We're coming back in. I am. Did you hear that? I did. Man's voice said, I am. We're coming back in. I am. Did you hear that? I did. We're coming back in. I am. Did you hear that? I did. Man's voice said, I am. Oh, I got chills. Yeah, dude, me too. All my hair. All my hair is standing up. If you don't want us to come back in, make that go off again. Is, is this the angry spirit? Is this the angry person? Anger. Anger. Is, is this the angry spirit? Is this the angry person? Anger. 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 Are you mad because you what you thought would happen after you died wasn't actually what happened. <sighs> wow. Are you mad because you didn't go to heaven? They're witches. I thought it said, I wish. Oh, maybe it did. Dude, this is fucking wild. I did not expect this when we walked in here. No, we weren't even supposed to come in here. No. Are you trapped here on Earth? Are you trapped in this building? Is your soul trapped in this building? No. Just real quick, I'm gonna move okay. this REM pod into the left room. Okay. 
really quick. I'm gonna check the times here because I think someone, I don't know if someone's gonna be coming in here or not. The morgue would be available, I think, after, or maybe not, but we have women's is available from 10.30 to 11.30 if we wanted to do that. Okay. It just said heaven. It did? I think it said some, uh, something, something, heaven. It just said a heaven. It just said a heaven. Do you want to go to heaven? The thing that interests me most about that mel meter is that when it when we set it up we were setting up this camera getting everything ready to start with the session it went off with a small blip like blip 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 whoa rem pod but then it was silent for like 10 minutes and then once it started to go off it became very responsive to us and now it has just stopped but I seriously do think that there is something here because this was a very sad place and you have to think of the anger that goes along with being abandoned in a place like Aradale Asylum. Someone might still to this day be angry that they were left here and they felt that they would finally be able to leave after death and they're still here and that makes them angry. And maybe that's why the staff, the tour guides don't like this area. Yeah. Because there's someone here who is so angry they're gonna take that out on whoever comes in here. That's what it feels like and that's what it seems like to me from what we captured. Yeah, I agree. But do you want to move over? I think the neck. Oh, let's hit the spirit box. It's off. What was that sound then? I didn't hear anything. Finish. Finish. That's weird, man. Yes, we're just about finished. We're gonna leave. I think at this point, the area that's free for us to go to is the first level of the women's quarters. Yes. So. Do you want to go over there? Yeah, let's go. Let's gather this up. Okay, this is going to be Dave Estes session at uh, Aradale. All right. Okay, just uh, let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. All right, let's do this. All right. If there's any women here, any ladies here who are, who live at Airedale, my friend Dave is over there in the next room in the day room. You can walk up and speak to him. Tell him your name. There's a very creepy feeling in here right now. Or there's all of this stuff which is set up. And if you would like to use any of it, all you have to do is touch it. Sounded like a female said down. Okay. Do you want me to sit down? I'll sit down. I don't know about this. There's a lot of Australian critters that hang out in these old buildings, but we'll sit down. How's that? Is this better? Something just moved that door right there. Is there someone in there? That door is locked. Are 
Are you trying to open that door? Hide behind you or right behind you? Something just moved that door right there. This door just moved though. And it's locked. Now what's in there? It's not like it goes outside. But it sounded like the door went. I don't even know. What's behind this? Sounded like a female said, I know. Who is the lady that's playing pranks on me right now? Are you trying to scare me by moving things? Are you trying to show me where you are? Try opening one of these doors right here. Can you do that? It's getting very cold in this room. Behind, male voice. Behind. I'm back up against, back up against the wall right now. Is there something behind that door? Is there something behind that door that we should know about? Is there something behind that door that we should know about? in here. Who was, who lived down here? Can you tell me? Whew, I'm getting so nauseous. Are you making him feel nauseous? Speak to him, say something to him. Can you tell us your name? Is there anyone down here? What's this room used for? Can you go and tell Dave? This just shows how two different sessions in the same asylum can be so different. Besides the one unexplained possible voice, and the strange rattling of the door. Nothing else peculiar has happened in the whole 45 minutes that we've been in the women's ward. Even the spirit box has been surprisingly quiet. But that's the nature of paranormal research, and the absence of action only adds validity to what happened in the men's infirmary. Are you having anything happen? Not, not in the past like 20 minutes. 
yeah, nothing has come through here. It was weird because at the beginning you heard a female voice. Um, there was some very relevant stuff there when it kept saying behind you because it said down and I sat down on the floor. Oh, really? And then it sounded like something pushed on one of the doors down here as I was sitting on the floor. But then after that, it just went dead. None of the equipment's gone off that I know of. I even walked down this hallway and walked back. I haven't had a peep, so. Wow. But you want to gather our stuff and then maybe finish off with a session in the morgue? Yeah, let's do it. So we are getting ready to start our final session here. Unfortunately, our time at Aradale is winding down, but we wanted to save this for last. Whenever this didn't pan out first, we knew we had to save this for last because the morgue was the final stop for many of the patients here at Aradale. On record estimation, they said anywhere between 10,000 and 13,000 deaths on property and they would have come through the morgue. So we're gonna see if there's any activity in here. I am going to actually lay on the slab inside the body cooler and then Dave is gonna push and lock me in the cooler for a little bit to see what happens. Are you ready, man? I'm ready, let's go do this. Let's do it. You're right. What did you just hit? Innocent. Gurney handle straight to the nuts. <laughs> okay. I've got the K2s. Turning the hat around. Okay. Hands are in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ready? Ready. God, I've wanted to do this for a long time, you guys. <laughs> Here we go. K2's down. K2's down. Two of them. Before you shut that door, you want to set the K2s up? Yeah. I don't know if they'll stay like that or not, but let's see what happens. See you never. See you never. What happened? K2 down. It went all the way down. Sure. We'll just have to get it when we're done. Okay. Hold on to that one. Hand. All right, ready? Yeah. Yes. All right, I am officially locked in the cooler. All right, well, you guys are now permanently stuck with me. All right, we are now in the morgue. My name is Dave, and my friend Ryan is in the cooler there. And we're just trying to put ourselves somewhat through the experience that you went through while you were here. We don't mean any disrespect. We just would like to know what you went through. You understand? We know that uh, we know that your stay here at Aradale was unfortunately probably difficult. And we're sorry for that. Now we're hoping that you'll come out and speak with us while we're here. We have a few devices set up throughout. This one. See how it turned green? 
When I ask a yes or no question, you can light that up green for yes. And then this side turns red for no. Over here. Nancy. Oh. That you can touch to communicate. Nancy. And we have a music box right here. Nancy, are you here? All of those things will let us know that you're here. Nancy, can you touch that to let me know that you're here? Just like this. That's how you do it. If you're in here with us, could you try alarming one of our devices to let us know? Do you know that you have passed away? I'm not gonna lie, it is very creepy in here to be laying on this. I'm just here to talk to you. Daughter. Don't mean any disrespect. It said daughter. Daughter? Was your daughter here? Can you reach out and grab my hand? I wish that you would let me know you're here by making one of these devices go off. We just want to talk. We want to give you a chance to speak. Did you lay on this slab? Just like I am now? Could you go in there with Ryan? and let him know what your name is? Was that you making that sound? Go out there to Dave and push something over. You all right, Dave? Dave? Well, it appears Dave has left me in here alone. There's someone in this morgue with me. You can touch that to let me know that you're here. You can go out and touch one of the devices, one of the things with lights. Oh, no fucking way. Thank you. Did you just not like that Dave was in here? Did you want to be did you want us to be alone? You can go out and touch one of the devices, one of the things with lights. Oh, no fucking way. Definitely wasn't me. Above my head, there's a box that you can use to speak to me and let me know where we are. Can you tell me what? what part of the building we're in. And you can see guys, my hand is right here and it's not setting it off. Come on.
Okay, I'm back. Did you do anything? Were you able to make communication? Dave's back again. Rest in peace. Whoa. What? The ghost tube just said rest in peace. Wow. And while you were gone, something touched the mel meter in here with me. Really? Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. And I hope you rest in peace as well. I hope if you are here, that you're here because you choose to be, not because you're stuck here. And, and I wanna thank anyone who decided to come out and speak to us tonight. Anyone who wanted to talk to us, anyone who tried to talk to us, whether you had good intentions or bad. Thank you for having us here this evening. We greatly appreciate it. You ready to come out of there? Yeah, pull me out. Hello. Hi. Eloise Asylum. Closed in 1984, the place has been a magnet for ghost hunters, and some people swear it's haunted. Lobotomies, electroshock, so-called hydrotherapy, performed on patients inside of this asylum. It would have been like torture. We heard something scream from behind them, and it, the scream sounds like someone's in pain. It's very creepy. Mm -hmm. It's very, very creepy in here. It is. The shadow figures peeking around the corner. You walk into the room, they are going out of the room. How many spirits are there here at Eloise Asylum? Wow. Wow. That is cool. You. Whoa. Whoa. I've got a burning on my back. That was creepy. That was. Out. Wow. Did somebody hurt you while you were here? Something just mapped right over here in this room. That's insane. That is wild. We are pulling out here and we are heading over just a few miles near Detroit to one of America's most haunted asylums. Oh, I'm so ready for this. I am so ready for this too. This place is legendary in the paranormal field with the amount of paranormal activity and the amount of things that have happened here, the amount of people who lost their lives. It is a bucket list location in the paranormal field. It really is, man. I mean, we have been wanting to come here for a very, very long time. And the fact that we get to come here with those two. I know. Huge shout out, we were invited to come and investigate this asylum by Cag and Allison of Adelaide Haunted Horizons. They are in the country, in the United States, and they said, come along with us to Eloise. Oh yeah. So tonight we're gonna take you along with us inside Eloise Psychiatric Hospital, one of the most haunted psychiatric hospitals in the United States of America. I think I see it up there. I think I see the top of it. Oh yeah, that is it. Right up there. Oh my God. <laughs> Crazy. Wow. This is just insane. <laughs> this is, this place is massive. Yeah, this is wild. What do you think? Should we get out and go and see what Eloise has to offer? Let's see what it has to offer. I think this is going to be a really good one. This is going to be a good one. Let's go! The name Eloise has unusual origins for a facility like this. It was named after Eloise Dickerson DeVock, the daughter of Detroit's postmaster. This innocent child's name would stand in contrast to what the facility would become the largest psychiatric hospital in the United States of America. 
So we are in the K Beard building or the D building. There was 78 buildings and 902 acres on the property and there's five buildings left. This building was one of the main buildings. Everybody who came to Eloise had to come through those doors and get evaluated here and then they would be distributed to where other buildings they needed to go. Eloise was more than just a hospital. It was a sprawling city for the unwanted and forgotten. These people's journey at Eloise started in D building. The building will be investigating tonight, but the 77 other buildings provided more than just treatment for the mentally ill. It included the Eloise infirmary, a poor farm for those who had nowhere else to live, and the Eloise sanatorium, a tuberculosis hospital for those infected with one of the most deadly diseases in human history. Here at Eloise, the poor, the mentally ill, and the fatally sick all lived in one complex. Hello, Eloise. Welcome to the third floor. All right, so when you come up the stairs, every on the right is going to be the surgical room. It's that, in that spot on every floor. This door here is the hydrotherapy room. going to be in the same spot on every floor. <laughs> I got a uh, part of it, yeah. Not the whole thing, but... Did you just walk into that? She just tripped over that. <laughs> you stand the wave. We'll keep you. <laughs> Honestly. Did you trip or were you pushed? I was pushed. That's the first incident. First of yeah. maybe multiple. <laughs> okay, so here's the hydrotherapy area. The tub would be here on a platform. Um, the patient would get in. They would put a cloth over the whole bathtub and it would be hot water, cold water. Um, there was one patient that died two patients that died during the hydrotherapy that we have records of. A gentleman turned the hot water on as hot as can be and fought off all the orderly and nurses. And he died of his burns. And then Harmonia, I think Harmonia was nine years old or 11 years old, forgive me. She was left unsupervised and she had a seizure and so she passed away in the tub. The hydrotherapy room is just one of many grave reminders of how little people running this hospital knew about mental illness and how little society as a whole knew at that time. Because just down the hall is one of three identical rooms with a horrifying history. So surgical room, there's one on every single floor. What type of surgeries would they do in here? See, we don't have any proof on act what the actual did. But each floor has this room. There was a major hospital right next door on either side of this building. So, and then the first floor is emergency wing also. So they had to do stuff here on the patients, I to my, I would think so. With having all the other hospitals, I mean, why have all these rooms? Mm -hmm. So uh, electric shock therapy, yes, I would say they, they would probably do them in these rooms. Lobotomy, since they didn't give them any anesthesia or anything like that. Um, hydrotherapy over there, so they could have done insulin shock therapy. They said that uh, people with mental disabilities cannot feel pain. So they would do procedures without any pain medication. It's a tragic truth. Most people who were sent to Eloise Psychiatric Hospital left with more damage done to their mind. But some never left at all. And many people believe that these lost souls are still here to this day. In many different activities here. 
the shadow figures peeking around the corner. You walk into the room, they are going out of the room or out of the area you're going in. So keep eye low. You'll see the twinkles. Um, doppelgangers have been reported. When the doppelgangers happen, do they generally happen to the person that is seeing them or is it to their friends, to someone who knows them? Um, a few of them have been me. They said they've seen me, but yeah. And then our uh, security and then another person. So it's people who work here, they see us, but like they'll see me with a hat on in this shirt, but I don't have a hat on. Okay, so now we are in solitary confinement. What kind of patients would have been kept in solitary confinement? The ones that could not be around other people. They did harm to themselves or other people and couldn't be over there. With the size of them, we don't know they could be two people in this room or one, or they could have had maybe bunk beds. If these person, if they had to be restrained, they could have put multiple people. We don't have like documented proof, like this person was in here for how long we had two people in there. Please be very careful in solitary confinement if you are closing any doors that are still existing. You like to close yourself. <laughs> Allison. <laughs> Why me? Wait, well, Why I'm just, me? you can close, just don't yeah. fully close it at all. <laughs> Today, it's been proven that solitary confinement does more harm than good. The isolation becomes maddening, and it seems that these walls still remember that pain. We heard something scream from behind them, and it, the scream sounds like someone's in pain, it's just, and it was loud, but none of them heard it. But we wow. heard it clear as day. Our yeah. hair is standing up, and we're about to go, and they're like, where are you going? I'm like, didn't you hear that scream? No one over there heard that scream. Mm. You, I, those are the one things I hate. Mm. very creepy. Mm -hmm. Very, very creepy in here. It is. Adding to the confusion of this hospital building, the third and fourth floors are identical, making it very Bathroom. easy to get lost. Yeah, you do kind of have that feeling like you're, you kind of forget what floor you're on if you didn't look at the actual signs above the doors, because everything looks exactly the same. Yeah, and we don't have, we don't have signs on every floor either. <laughs> so you're like, what? But the fifth floor is different much smaller compared to all the floors below. This level of the hospital was used for a special type of patient. Hello, gentlemen. So this was men's up here on this floor? Yep. Gotcha. Any specific classification of men or? Max security men. So, Max security men? Yeah. And it would be pretty much like mental illness and inmates both up here. Some other asylums that we visited have classified areas like this as the criminally insane ward, a place where severe mentally ill men would find themselves after committing horrific crimes. Hello, gentlemen. Here we are, solitary confinement. Your own personal experiences. What would be the most outstanding experience paranormally? When I first started here two years, almost three years ago, um, I came in for an audition for the haunted house and they were still working on the haunted house. It was still in the summer. So I'm like, well, Hey, if you need help, I can help. And so I was down in the basement and I was putting, um, a fire protectant over the props we were doing. And it was an open hallway like this. And there's two circle things. And I just saw head and shoulders. It was all black, you know, and I'm just how I'm seeing you. I saw that um, a few days later, it kind of kicked in that it, I didn't feel scared. It didn't feel like I didn't have to leave that spot or nothing like that. So I joined the paranormal team that week. And then as a site rep, what I'm doing now, we had a paranormal team here and someone wasn't answering their walkie. 
So they're like, we can't find her. And I'm like, all right, I'll go look for her. Come with me. And we were running the halls, calling her name. And it was a surgical room on third floor. And uh, I'm like, we're Kim, Kim. We came up the stairs and around. I saw, again, it's like, eh. It was black, had a white face. I figured, white face, I'm like, oh, she's in here. They followed me. I turned, look, she wasn't in there. My eyes got so big, because <laughs> I knew she, I just saw her. And I just went behind them and they're like, what, what's wrong? And I'm like, well, it wasn't her. You guys are gonna go ahead. I need to compose myself. We'll just keep walking till we find her. So those were the two shadow figures I have seen. There's no doubt in our minds. The history of Eloise is nothing short of tragic. Victims of mental illness, tuberculosis, and of circumstance all gathered here. And over 7,200 of them are still buried here. If any place were to be haunted, it would definitely be Eloise. But how haunted is it? There's only one way to find out. All right, so we are getting ready to start the first session here at Eloise Asylum. We are on the third floor over in the maximum security solitary confinement wing. And right now, Allison is set up in one of the solitary cells on a bed, and she's gonna be performing an Estes Method spirit box session, which is when she listens to the spirit box through headphones and then calls out what she hears. It's supposed to actually eliminate bias for what she actually hears. If there are responses that are intelligent and make sense, we'll play off of that. Dave's gonna have ghost tube rolling to see if those responses match up and CAG is gonna be asking questions along with us. So this is gonna be interesting. And as always, we're gonna be recording that spirit box audio. So when a voice comes through, you're gonna be hearing it right along with Allison. You ready, Dave? I'm ready. Are you ladies ready? We're ready. All right. As we get started with this Estes session, the camera battery in the solitary room with Allison dies. We aren't sure if the battery was drained or if the camera battery is just faulty, but it will take us a few minutes before we realize that the camera's shut off. Until then, we'll only have Allison's audio and the audio of the spirit box to know what responses she's receiving. All good. Right there is CAG. Is Allison... Are you listening, Allison? What? Yeah. Are we, go are we ready? Yeah. Yes. I was asking if you were listening. I think it just said they told you, but there you go. Oh, oh speak. Speak. Peace. 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 Are you at peace? Somebody just left. Who's laughing? Can you come through the radio? And tell us your name. We're all friendly. We're all here to be. Either six funny. or six. <laughs> it said funny. Play ball. Oh, do you want to play ball? <laughs> Oh, I've got cold chills. I thought I... I don't know if I've got a ball in my kit. Oh, no, we have. We've got balls. Yeah, I think I've got some right here, too. Um, I'm glad you've got balls. I've got many. <laughs> here, I'm going to roll this to you. If you want to play, you can try and pick it up and roll it back to me if you want. Can you try and push that back over here to us? All right, I'm just going to interrupt here. Yeah. Because I've got a burning on my back. Burning on your back? Yeah. It's... Do you want to check it out? Yeah, can somebody check it? You want to yeah. check her? Yeah. It's out. Between the shoulder blades. Okay, let me have a look. About here. Oh, even I just can't get to there? It. Somewhere there or just down from on the shoulder blades. Just blade. there. 
down a little bit, maybe just under the... No, I can't see anything. It's just suddenly started burning. Is it? I have a look can't at it. see anything. So I don't know whether it's a... I'm more worried whether it was a spider or something. The lady that sat down there, she's got some funny things on her ears. And if you talk to her, she'll be able to tell us what you're saying. So, my name is Cag, and I know it's a really... Oh, good... somebody's dead. I don't know if it's a name. What? Somebody's, somebody's dead. dead and, but she didn't know if it, was, if it was a name. What's the name on the door? It was... Um... Jerry P. Jason. Now, I don't know if that's Jerry and Jason or if that was this person's full name. Jerry P. Jason or Jason Jerry? Or Jerry and Jason or Jerry and Jason? Can you just let us know what your name is, please? So, my name's Cag. What's your name? Can you tell me, please? I'm Dave. That's Ryan. That's Allison. What's your name? If you're too afraid to set off one of the lights close by because you don't want to get close to us, there's lights all the way down the hallway here or there's one by the doorway or outside that doorway. You want to move down this way? Weak. Weak. Well, if, you, if you're weak and you're trying Stop. to- Stop. Staff, is that what she said? I thought it was start. A start? We just want to know, can you tell me, do you miss anybody or do you miss anything? Something die. That's the second time. Yeah. She's mentioned some, someone or something died. Yeah. Allison didn't hear it in the moment, but a man's voice clearly comes through saying, Hoffa. <laughs> this is very odd because Eloise is less than 30 miles from where Jimmy Hoffa, the Teamsters leader and mafia man, went missing on July 30th, 1975. To this day, Jimmy Hoffa has never been found, and no one has officially been named responsible for his disappearance. Is it possible that someone here at Eloise knew what happened to him? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Did someone, did someone die in here? Tripwire. Yeah. You. You. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. None of us are gonna die here. At least not that we know of. We'd rather not. Are we already dead? Friends. friends. Hmm. Yeah, we're friends. We are. I thought that was distraught. We just want to, to um, just to talk to you and find out all about you, if possible. Can you remember your name? Tripwire. It hasn't really, not that I've seen that it's gone, I don't think it's gone off since, until we moved down here, did it? It hasn't, no, I've been watching it. And as soon as we walked down here, it started to flash. You like those pretty lights on the ground? We brought them for you. Are you okay with my friend sitting in that room? Are you okay with her being in there? If you're not, can you tell her to get out please, nice and clearly? I think I've heard ass twice now. Ass? 
This is why we record the spirit box during the Estus. Even when we don't hear or understand the responses, they are captured. So there's no denying what was said. And right after Cag asks for someone to tell Allison to get out. Are you okay with my friend sitting in that room? Are you okay with her being in there? If you're not, can you tell her to get out please, nice and clearly? A very clear voice does just that. But Allison's been under the Estes a long time. And minutes later, when we go to pull her out, we discover the camera that turned off. Uh, it was at the beginning, but I don't know when this died. It died? Yeah, the camera just stopped, turned off. I don't know at what point that it stopped, but the camera itself just died. It well, says I... that there's a full battery right now, but I'm not gonna trust that. Yeah, because when I set it down there, it had over an hour, because I looked at it, and it's only been like 15, 20 minutes. It's been 17 minutes. Wow. That's bizarre. I, was, I just wasn't getting anything at all. So now we can change the battery and let CAG have a turn at listening. I don't know really what I did weird. with that battery. The ghost tube came through and said died, which you kept saying over and I over. I kept hearing died. See that orange light right there in front of me? Right there. Died. You did. It was like a name of somebody then died. Window. Oh, shit. Window. Window. Did you jump out the window? God! Are we talking to anybody in there? I'm not sure if they introduced me. My name's Alison. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's all right. Sorry you wouldn't talk to me in there. Maybe you were trying to talk to me and I just couldn't hear it. Out! Do you not want anyone in this room? You like to keep the room to yourself. Tripwire. Yeah, that was the tripwire down here. Let's walk down this way a little bit. I'll keep asking questions. Did you hurt yourself? Or did somebody hurt you, maybe? Yes! Oh, oh did wow. Did somebody hurt you? Okay. Sorry to hear that. That's very unfortunate. Every hour. Every hour. Every hour? Did they look after you in here? Were they kind to you? Thank you. Didn't that say the oh, same did you thing? hear that? What'd you hear? Did anybody's stomach go? No. no. I heard a giggle, like a little girl. Thank you. Didn't that say the oh, same did you thing? hear that? Oh, did you hear that? Do you remember your name? Might have been a long time since anybody called you by your name. Do you remember what you were called? There's five. There's five. There's five. Sam? Sam. Sam. So who are we talking to? Thank you for giving us a name. Sam, people probably come in here wanting things from you all the time. Women? Women? I suppose so. Is there anything we can do for you? <laughs> there are women here. Are you all right with us being here? Happy to say, stay and keep you company. 
and chat to you. Did you hear that? That was a loud noise. Uh, yeah. yeah. Down there. All the way at the end. Yeah. Should we move down the hallway? Would you talk to us down there? That's the other thing. There may just not be nothing in there. Got! Got! What? Got? Got? Got what? You said somebody hurt you. How did they hurt you? Were they trying to help you? I gotta go! You've gotta go. Well, if you do have to go, then. No! Oh, okay. Why do you have to leave? I don't know! You just don't want to talk to us. That's alright, you don't have to. We appreciate it though. Go away. Go away. Go away. Out. Out. Wow. Wow. Ghost tube said go away. Go away and then she says out. Yeah. We continued to investigate for more than 20 minutes, but the intelligent answers have seemed to stop. The only excitement was Allison tripping and almost falling again. You just run into that chair. <laughs> so it's time for us to pack up and move to a different floor. We'll go up to the fourth floor and investigate with Allison and Cag once again. But that session will only be available to watch on the Adelaide Haunted Horizons YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to them and be on the lookout for their video from Eloise. Now let's rejoin our investigation as Dave and I go down to the second floor to do an SLS sweep. All right, Ryan, what are we up to now? So we're going to sweep this entire floor with an SLS camera. And this camera maps objects using structured light sensors. And then if it senses something that is shaped like a human, it'll mark it with a stick figure mapping. A lot of people believe that these stick figure mappings that pop up randomly in places where there are no human shaped objects could possibly be anomalies, spirits, or some other type of paranormal phenomena. So we're going to go throughout this second floor here, do some EVP sessions as well see what we can pick up on. Yes, and while we are here, Cag and Allison are up on the fifth floor doing their very own um, separate session up there. That's right, so we are, there's two floors between us, so there shouldn't be any contamination. This is a big building, 28,000 square feet per floor. Yes. It's crazy. Let's get started. Let's head down this way. If there's anyone in here, We're gonna be coming down. My name's Ryan, this is Dave. We don't mean you any harm. We come with respect to you and what you lived through, and we wanna know your story. We wanna know who you are. Ooh. I have static all around me right here. That is so weird. Do you? Yes, my hair is standing up all over my body. Are you near me right now? If you're near me, can you touch one of these lights or move down on that end, on the opposite end? Walk across the hallway and there'll be a box that'll play music for you. There's also a box down here in that doorway. If you get close to it, it should play music as well. We wanted to bring you something that you may not have gotten a lot of when you were in here. Music. Did you enjoy music? I'm gonna turn on this box, which has a light. You may have seen them before. If you get close to this and you speak as loud as you can, we might be able to hear your voice. 
EVP, Eloise Asylum, second floor, Ryan and Dave. Placing right here on the window. Were you a patient here at Eloise? Ooh, something just mapped right over here in this room. Oh wow. Ooh, and it's gone. Right in front of, like right to the, to the right of that door. Yeah. Who are you? What's your name? Is it okay if I come into this room with you? Did they perform painful treatments on you here? Ending. Do you, I hear that too. Wow, wow, that is cool. One more time. That was very clear. Yeah. It's like, get out. Yeah. Wow. That's, That's awesome. the only thing that it caught, too. Yeah. Well, we'll walk through and get out of this room here. Sorry for disturbing you. That's wild because that's right where that figure was. That's in the same room where that figure popped up. And that voice that said, get out, came through right after I asked, is it okay if I come into this room? That's insane. That is wild. Should we roll on another one? So for some reason, I've been getting this feeling that we need to go in, I know there's a camera in there, but go into that room down there where the camera is. Okay. I thought I heard something over there. Really? We're coming down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never fail. Curse of the cat ball. Turned it off too with my foot when I stepped on it. <laughs> We're coming in. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but something about this room. It is very weird in here. Yeah. There's a strange vibe. If there's anyone in here with us, I'm gonna record on this again. And we're gonna see if you can put your voice on this little box right here. It'll record. And then, 
hopefully, we'll get a message from you. Someone down the hallway spoke to us and told us to get out. Rolling, this is end of the hallway. Eloise Asylum. Is there anyone in this room with us? Any patients? Any staff members? Did somebody hurt you while you were here? Can you tell us how old you are? Were you here for the tuberculosis hospital or were you here when this was a psychiatric hospital? Was that? <laughs> I just I accidentally drugged my foot, man. Calm down. <laughs> God damn. When you're on, when you're listening for something to happen, you gotta warn a guy before you do that. Holy sh! <laughs> when you're listening for sounds, shoo. Or were you here from when this was an alms house? Do you have a message for anyone? A message that you want them to know? Do you know that you are dead? Ending, 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 ending. Rolling, this is. This is the hallway. Halloween Asylum. Is there anyone in this room with us? Any patients? Any staff members? Did somebody hurt you while you were here? Can you tell us how old you are? Were you here for the tuberculosis hospital or were you here when this was a psychiatric hospital? Wait, go back. Do you hear that? I feel like I hear it. Don't something something. Do you hear that? Don't listen something.
Ew. Don't listen something. Play it at regular speed. That's weird. That is. We'll have to cross-reference that with the video to see if when I was laughing I started to speak, because I did say listen in my sentence afterwards, so that may have been me trying to formulate the sentence. I don't really remember. But we'll cross-reference that with the video and see if I started to speak saying, like, listen, like, listen, man, or something like that. Okay. So we'll cross-reference it. It may have been me that okay. said that, so. And when we watch the video back, in this exact moment, we were just quietly laughing. I accidentally drugged my foot, man. Calm down. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> when you're on, when you're listening for something to happen. When we take the recorder audio and place it over the video, it's inconclusive. Could the recorder have captured my quiet, high-pitched laughter and made it sound like a deep man's voice? The possible unexplained voice does sound very close to the recorder, though. So we'll ask you, is this me laughing and we're just experiencing apophenia? Or did a man speak to us during this chaos? Tell us in the comments below. Ooh. had something up on the wall, like really high up on the wall. Yeah. And then it went down to the chair and then disappeared. I don't know if it was a false positive or not. When you're on when you're listening for something to happen, you better warn you before you do that. Holy s***. So one interesting thing on that, I'm not sure if that was me, but you will know when I, because we have already cross-referenced it for you at this point, so. Interesting. Interesting. I do know for sure that Get Out was not one of us. No, get that Out was. Get Out from that other room. That was creepy. That was. Do you want to go back over there to that room? Yeah. Was it this? It was in here, the second yeah, it was room. right here. All right. We know you told us to get out and we apologize for that, but we just want to know more about you. We don't mean you any harm. We don't mean you any disrespect. We don't want to upset you, but we're here to try and figure out if you can still speak to us, if you can still hear us. So if you can, can you go over there and stand beside Dave? Can you go over there and stand right beside the door, in that doorway? Come over here and stand beside me, please. Since we caught an EVP in here before, I'm gonna roll on this one more time. Okay. You want me to set it away from? Rolling, this is EVP session, second one in the room where we caught Get Out, Eloise. Giving recorder to Dave and he'll place it down. Placing. Why are you so upset that we're in this room? Are you angry about what happened here? Did you work here or were you a patient here?
We had two of our friends here with us. Do you remember their names? How did you pass away? If you know that you've passed away, how did you pass away here in this, in this hospital? Can you tell me what month it is? I forget. Do you think that we're being friendly towards you? Nothing. Nothing. That right there validates what we actually had happen in this room when we first stepped in here because we caught an SLS figure right over here by this door and then we captured what sounded like someone telling us to get out on this recorder. We caught an EVP. That was very clear. Yeah. The second time we come in here, we didn't capture any SLS figures. We didn't have anything pop up. And we didn't capture any EVPs either. So when we, f I think we walked in on someone when we were in here. I think you're right. Let me check the time because we are on a very strict time schedule on this one. So we caught some interesting stuff here on the second floor and I don't want to neglect this side of the floor, but Allison and Cag are leaving the fifth floor and we only have about 40 minutes left in our night here. And we want to get up there to the fifth floor where the high security men were housed. Yeah. Before our night's over here at Eloise Asylum. Cause here in about 45 minutes, we have to be out of here. You ready to pack this up and, and head on up to the fifth floor? Let's do it. Let's pack it up and head to the fifth floor. Violent. Violent. This was the violent men's ward. What? The ovalist just said violent, and this was the high security men's ward where the most violent of the patients were kept up here. They said they intermingled not only patients, psychiatric patients, but also inmates from prisons were sent here. Mm. Certain. Certain. Okay, rolling on seer, we're gonna. Already. So we have what looks like a war. Helmets that kind of look like World War II. World War I possibly. Which I'm sure there would have been patients with PTSD or as they called it back then, shell shock. Oh, absolutely. That could have just been, that could be me reaching to find connection with this, but you know, we're going to run on seer without the lens just to see what images come through along with any of the other equipment. The ovalis is set up right down here and out in the hallway here, we have more equipment. So are there any men up here who would like their story to be told that would like to tell us about their life here? At Eloise. 
Ooh, tripwire just went off out there. Did it? Are you out there in the hallway? You can come in here. I have an elderly lady in a pink dress carrying some sort of blue fabric. Tripwire just went off again. Gentlemen, you don't have to be afraid. You can come in here and have a chat with us. Come on down this way into this room. We see you making that flash. Can you walk all the way down that to make the other lights go off? Hip and hop inside. <laughs> Are you? We've got a bunch of stones, almost looks like Stonehenge in a way, but not really. A bunch of vertical stones beside a tree. Are you hip and hopping? If you walk through the doorway down this way, you'll hear some music play. You can also slam a door. Oh, that camera's getting ready to die. We just changed the- Or no, wait. Yeah. I think it was the one that we were using downstairs that died. Pirate ship. A pirate and some pirate and a pirate ship. <laughs> Pirate's booty. Okay, we put a bad battery on this camera when we started this session, so I'm just changing it. Okay, cool. So that's rolling now. Sync. Good thing I saw that. Yeah, I've been trying to keep an eye on that one down there too. Cause... Ooh, that was more than one. That went up to green on one and then went blue all the way back from about the halfway point. Are you out there in the ward? Ooh, it just flashed again. Can we come out there and talk to you? Congruency. How many people passed away here in this hospital? How many spirits are there here at Eloise Asylum? Does it upset you that they tore all the other buildings down? accusing themselves from that opinion. They are. I mean, if you think about that too, though, all the buildings that used to be on this site and all of the buildings that were torn down. Describe. Describe, yes. Always nine bill. Describe always nine bill. Those spirits that were in those other buildings could have migrated over here to this building. Are you, was this the building that you lived in or are you from a different building? Did you live somewhere else? Intent. If you want to, you can stand right there to listen for the obelisk. Yeah. And to be ready for seer images. <laughs> Is it okay if I come out here? What did they do to you here? That's me. Stab. Stab. It said stab? Yeah. Oh my god. 
Were you stabbed here? We want to know your story. These lights that, were, that we have set up are not just to make you perform. These are ways that we can see that you're here and maybe even answer questions. If someone stabbed you here, can you touch one of these lights in the hallway or by the door? There's a red one, a green one. There's a, a, a soft blue one right here. I don't know if we introduced ourselves, but my name is Dave and that's Ryan. What is your name? Did they send you here because you committed a crime? Come on out and talk to us, please. You don't have to, but we're giving you a chance. Dave, let's walk down this way for a second. Okay. I wanted to see something that we didn't get a chance to see when we were up here on the walkthrough. Somewhere in here, she said that there was a, I think it would have been back here. The hydrotherapy room. That's right, it is in here. Yeah, somewhere in here is a hydrotherapy room with the actual hydrotherapy tub still in here. There it is. Oh, wow. Should I sit in it? Yeah, get in there. This is so weird. The stuff we do. I mean, this is... This was, this was somebody's nightmare. Yes. EVP, this is the fifth floor. This is the hydrotherapy tub. This tub that I'm sitting in right here. Did they do something horrible? Did they give you some horrible treatment here? What did they use this tub for, can you tell me? Did they purposefully torture you in this tub? What was the reason that you were here at Eloise? Did this therapy or treatment work for you? Do you think that you deserved to be here? These places were so common back then, but nowadays it's very well known and very widely accepted that no one should be subjected to a place like this. And we're sorry that you had to go through this.
interesting it's a very surreal feeling to be sitting here even though we don't seem to be having any communication with anyone in here i mean just to think all the lives that were affected by this place all the lives that were affected just right where you're at right where i'm sitting it's common knowledge that there was a gentleman that apparently had uh, turned the water up to its highest temperature without the staff knowing, and he succumbed to burns from the hot water and soaking in it. It's just a sad, sad place, man. It's not something that we will ever be able to understand. Mm -hmm. There's no one to, in today's day and age, at least in the United States or any developed country, there's no one that could really understand what this was like back then. Just the horrors of these, these asylums, these psychiatric hospitals, the things that these walls saw. Awful places. Mm -hmm. um, this is definitely well worth checking out. We would highly recommend that you spend some time investigating Eloise Asylum. It is a beautiful location, beautiful building, with a lot of sad history hidden inside of it. And possibly even a lot of spirits, even just from that second floor session with the EVPs that we caught. And the weird stuff that happened when we were with Allison and CAG filming and investigating for their video. Yeah. So make sure you go over to Adelaide Haunted Horizons and watch their version of the events that happened if you wanna see some very relevant responses that also gave Dave and <laughs> Allison and CAG a good laugh. Head over to Adelaide Haunted Horizons YouTube channel and watch that. It'll be linked down in the description. And uh, we'll let you know whenever that video comes out. We're not sure if it's going to be releasing at the same time. But you will know when that video comes out. So stay tuned for that. Yes, and a huge thank you to the both of them for allowing us to come out and join them here tonight. Yes. They are some of our dearest friends, and every time we get to see them, every time we get to investigate with them, it's very memorable, and it is very fun. So we love them, and we can't wait until the next adventure we get to go on with Allison and Kag. Oh yeah. This place was used for nearly 100 years as a mental asylum. And they say there are spirits trapped in these walls. I felt like a burning sensation going down my back. I had a handprint and three claw going down the center of my back. What is happening? The f Was that y'all? No. No. That was right beside me. What the actual f What the f was that? Thank you. Was this place hell for you? No, I'm freaked out. <laughs> I've never heard anything like that. No. That definitely sounds like a voice on this recording. What was that? That was single-handedly one of the creepiest things that I've experienced in a long time. Welcome guys to another adventure here on the Paranormal Quest channel. We are on our way to another haunted location, this time in Radford, Virginia. Dave, this is one we've wanted to do for a long, long time. Yes, it is. This has been on the bucket list for probably like eight to 10 years. Shoo! That we've been waiting to come here. 
this one is not only considered to be one of the most haunted places on the East Coast, but it is a location that has history just soaked in tragedy. This place was used for nearly 100 years as a mental asylum with treatments like electroshock therapy and hydrotherapy and insulin therapy that left some of the patients behind here. They say this place was known for the paranormal activity for years and oh my God, there it is. Oh, oh wow. It's just right there. Holy sh <laughs> This place opened as a boys school in 1892, but by 1916, a doctor named John King had purchased the building and converted it into a mental hospital. There was also a civil war battle up here on this hill. That's right. And they say that this whole area is Native American land as well. I mean, this place has so many reasons for it to be haunted. It does. Wow. This is crazy. Look at that vulture perched up on top. Oh, wow. I don't know if I can get a good shot of that. That is a big boy. Is that a sign of things to come tonight? I hope so. And once again, joining us tonight, we have Miranda. Oh. Miranda's <laughs> back. Hi. What do you think of this place, looking at it from the outside? It looks very, very creepy. I have a feeling when we get in here tonight, things are going to get a little bit creepy, a little bit scary. Yeah, more than likely. So we have, we can't get until eight, but we wanted to see the building in the daytime. Yeah. So let's go put some more layers on because it is going to be a cold, cold night tonight. Mm -hmm. Grab the rest of the equipment and when the sun goes down, Let's come back and tackle St. Albans Sanatorium. With a very special guest. With a very special guest, which you'll meet and see who it is when we are inside. That's right. Let's go. Let's go. St. Albans Sanatorium was first a Lutheran's boys' school and then an asylum for the insane. Built atop a hill that has seen horrific fighting between colonists and indigenous tribes, and later, Civil War soldiers. Nearly 200 years before the horrors of psychiatric medicine came to St. Albans, a woman named Mary Draper witnessed the bloody consequences of invading the land of the Shawnee tribe. She was just one of a few survivors from her group. In the next century, the Battle of Cloyd's Mountain would cement this place in history as the Union Army used this hill to bombard Confederate troops with artillery. This battle was one of the American Civil War's most violent clashes. By 1892, the memories of cannon fire had faded, and this hill would become the home of a Lutheran boys' school meant to build the students into the perfect Southern gentleman. It said the headmaster, George W. Miles, would achieve this goal at any means necessary. Allegedly, bullying wasn't only condoned, it was encouraged. And in that time, this attitude led to multiple tragedies on campus, including homicide. George Miles passed away in 1903, and by 1911, the school would close. But as Miles' dream for St. Albans failed and crumbled, someone else was cultivating their own aspirations for it. Dr. John King had a vision for the nation's first top-notch psychiatric hospital. And here, at St. Albans, he'd turn his own dream into the nightmare of many patients. Even with Dr. King's intentions of improved conditions, early 20th century psychiatric medicine was barbaric in its ignorance. Patients became test dummies for a number of experimental treatments, most with horrific side effects. And when surgically altering a patient's brain proved ineffective, they resorted to shocking and injecting them in hopes for a positive outcome. For the patients who survived, many believed the only way to end the torment was to take their own life. All of this tragic history has left a mark on St. Albans Sanatorium, and the tortured spirits left behind have given this building in Radford, Virginia, the reputation 
of the most haunted place in the eastern United States. All right, everybody, we're finally inside of St. Albans. Before we get the video started, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Let's see if we can get up to 10,000 likes on this video. There's over 170,000 of y'all watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button. I think we can get to 10,000. What do you think, Ryan? Are you ready? I am so excited. This location is so creepy. It is so haunted. It started out as a boys school in the late 1800s. 1916, it turned into a mental asylum and was known for the electroshock therapy, the hydrotherapy, a lot of the barbaric treatments that they would use for some of these psychiatric conditions. And they say there are spirits trapped in these walls. And there's a lot of areas in this, in this building. It's like a maze. So we're gonna split up. Miranda and I are gonna be going over to the electroshock and electroshock recovery, as well as possibly hydrotherapy, that whole area where some of those treatments took place. Dave, you're going to be going upstairs to some of the creepy patient rooms, and you're going to be going with Jason. Hey! How's it going? It's good, Jason. Good to see you, man. Good to see you all. Good to be back. Are you excited for St. Albans Sanatorium to take on the hauntings and history of this place? Yes. A lot of history, a lot of potential here, a lot of, a lot of suffering here. So, um, But like you say, it's, it's a maze, so we got our work cut out for us, and... Uh, hopefully we don't get lost too many times. <laughs> hopefully not. You guys ready? I'm ready. Dave, you got that POV head cam going on there, so... I do. <laughs> everyone's going to get to see the exact point of view. Everywhere you look, they're going to get to see. Oh, yeah. Let's get started. Let's do it. Hell yeah. Ready, Miranda? Ready. Good luck, y'all. Thank you. We're headed this way. Come on, Jason. We're headed right. this way. Just kidding. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> We're headed this way. We already got lost. <laughs> <laughs> Relatable. Here we go. Um, well, I was leading an investigation team that night. I went upstairs, we were doing a normal thing, and I just started feeling really tired <laughs> and just uneasy. As they were going on, I felt like I didn't want to be there anymore, but I knew I had to stay for the rest of the group. And I felt like a burning sensation going down my back. And I had one of the guys check for me, and I had a handprint and three claw scratch like, going down the center of my back. This would have been the electroshock waiting room from what they say. This big open area would have been where the patients would have been waiting for electroshock therapy. The electroshock therapy room is to the left and electroshock recovery is straight ahead. Now, we were told by the tour guides here as we arrived that the patients always knew when they were about to get electroshock therapy because they were not served breakfast that morning. They had to fast before electroshock. So you think about what that would be like for a patient to be sitting in your room, you'd just woken up, and then they inform you, you don't get breakfast. And as soon as you realize that you're not eating, you then realize you are going to get electroshock therapy today. Some of the energy that's expelled during that treatment could still be trapped in these walls. You wanna set up right here, Miranda? We'll set up some equipment and see what we can actually capture here in this area. Yes, that's good to me. Which room do you wanna do first? You wanna do the actual electroshock room? Um, yes. Okay. Maybe just start there. You guys, this place is just absolutely massive. <laughs> yeah, it, I don't know how in the world they uh, can learn their way around here. Me either. For the longest time, I've not had a problem with it. And then for the past year and a half, when I go up there, I'm scratched. I feel just uneasy. Upstairs, uh, there's another identical long hallway, and it's got several doors going off to different rooms, and you can just see somebody come through, peek around, and then they'll be on the opposite side of the wall and do the same thing. And there's no access into those other than 
being physical in them. You smell coffee? <laughs> no. I don't think. Huh. I think I just got a whiff of some now. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. All right, guys, we're going to go up to the very top floor on the new side, right? We're on the new side. Uh, I think, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, we're up here on the top floor on the new side where there were several, several unfortunate end of lives in a restroom up here. And also there was uh, like nurse nursing quarters and stuff up here. And when we came through on our little brief tour, it was very creepy up here. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, there was a very, very obvious vibe to this floor. Because it's like you said, when we went up, you were in front of me and you turned to look at me and I was already thinking the same thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, because once you get right there, it's, it's a little thick. Yeah. Dave's right. This bathroom on the attic floor is situated amongst various patient rooms has at least five confirmed cases of patients checking themselves out of the asylum early. One of those cases is a woman named Rebecca. Rebecca was pregnant when she was admitted to St. Albans, and unfortunately lost her child in the womb. Devastated with this loss, she kept her baby in a jar, hidden in the closet crawl space. But when the staff found it, they took it from her. That day, Rebecca checked out of St. Albans by way of the attic bathroom. She's said to be one of the many ghosts that haunts this floor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, guys, so this is the restroom here where supposedly there were five people. Right, five? Yeah, I think I said five, yeah. Five people who unfortunately met the end of their life right here in this room. And it was said that if one of the staff didn't want to bother with him, they would tell him to come up here and go to this bathroom. Right. Which is just horrible. Yeah. <clears throat> that was a hor horrible thing. Okay. Well, immediately. What is that? That is the, a temperature change on the far REM pod. Wow. Already. We literally just set it up in there. Maybe it's the close one, I can't tell. All right, so Miranda and I are officially inside the electroshock therapy room and you can actually imagine being in here the patients being strapped down, the electrodes being placed on their heads, and then the convulsive shock being sent through their body. So there were a lot of side effects to this treatment. Sometimes the end goal that the treatment had was a post-convulsive coma. They felt that that was when the actual most benefits were felt from the treatment was when they sent them into a brief coma after the electroshock went through their brain. So you think about the energy that could be stored in these walls not only from the possible patients that are left behind here in spirits, but the residual energy of these patients who were physically having electricity sent into their brains and how that could affect their brain chemistry and their brain electricity could leave behind. It could have left behind some sort of residual imprint on this area. So we'll see what we pick up on down here. You ready? I'm ready. You wanna go lights out? Oh yes. Let's go lights out. there's anyone here with us. My name is Ryan and this is Miranda. We've come a long way to talk to you. We heard that you might still actually be here. There might be patients trapped here inside this asylum, inside this sanatorium. 
And we've brought some toys with us, things that you can use to let us know you're here. There's a lot of different lights. Ooh, immediately. Wow. Thank you. Wow, that was fast. Thank you, you see how that did that? There's more over here on the sink if you wanted to actually go up and touch one of those two. Ooh, thank you. And if you go down that line, there's another one and then these red lights will light up. Wow, again, here I'm gonna, actually. That's not us, because we haven't been moving. Those balls are actually set off by, by, by vibration. So it's not as though there's anything electronic that, or electrical that needs to come in contact with that ball. It's just a vibration activated ball. Just as a preliminary to get some readings and see if we can get anything relevant coming through, I'm gonna turn on ghost tube and my device is already in airplane mode. Ooh. Thank you, St. Albans Ghost Tube. So I have this device in my hand. If you come up and talk to it, uh, we should be able to hear you. I want to talk. Wow. Wow. Well, we want to talk to you. Can you tell us your name? My name's Ryan and this is Miranda. I don't know if we said that yet, we may have. Are you a friend? Yes. We are friends. We wanna learn about your life. We want you to tell us your story. Who is he? Who is who? There's only two of us here. I'm Ryan. And then this lovely lady here, this is Miranda. And this box that Miranda's holding is just one of a few ways that we brought with us for you to talk. Hello. Man, it's talking a lot mm -hmm. immediately. Hello. You said you wanted to talk. I guess that's true. You're pretty chatty. What's your name? This is strange. <laughs> it is. It is very strange, but people have said that they've had experiences that they can't explain, that they believe are either spirits or ghosts or patients or someone. Jeremy. Jeremy. Is that your name, Jeremy? If your name is Jeremy, these lights right here, can you do this? Just like that. You get close to it, see how that lit up? Movement in there. And then I'll set up the pick. The pick. Hello, if there's anyone that can hear me. My name is Jason. This is my friend Dave. We're friendly guys. We're just here to visit. Maybe get to speak to you. Would you like to come talk to Dave and I? Like my friend said, his name is Jason. And my name is Dave. What is your name? Miss Rebecca, are you up here?
Please don't be afraid or worry about us. We're here for conversation. We're not doctors. We're not anyone who's here to do any treatments on you. We're just visitors who come with the utmost respect and love. Leave. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, here, let me grab a couple of these things and we'll go into recovery and leave this set up here. How about that? Maybe someone in recovery will be okay with us being in there. I get a weird vibe in here. Yeah, recovery is very creepy. Yeah. All the random mannequins and stuff is now back there. <laughs> they definitely add to the creep factor. That's right. Their Halloween attraction, they have props set up. In front of you. Ooh. Are you in front of, of us? Ooh, I'm like creeped out and I normally don't get creeped out. Yeah, it's very strange down here. Yeah. Okay, we left the room. We came into recovery. Is there someone in here that wants to talk to us? We have various lights. There's a ball on the table over there that you can light up or push off. And then right here, if you get close to it, it should light up different lights for us to see. If you're here and you would like someone to talk to, right there in the bathroom, right on the bathtub, there's a bright red light. Can you try and touch that red light if you'd like to talk? Thank you. Is this Rebecca? If this is Rebecca, can you try and do that again? Did you see how that <clears throat> it lit up and it made a noise? When you get close to it, We would love to get to hear you. Can you say your name out loud for us? Rolling EVP session, St. Albans. Going to place the recorder probably right over here on this edge of this table right here. And then turning away. Smoke. Oh, you want to smoke? Well, we don't have any. We can get you one. Would you like a cigarette? Make one of the devices go off or light up and we'll get you a cigarette. Move it. Move it. Move what? I just put a little red light over here. It's another little box that you can capture, you can speak onto. You put your voice on that box, we'll be able to hear it when we play it back. What did they used to do in this room? Please leave. Wow. Why do you want us to leave so badly? We, we're just friendly visitors. Jane. 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 <clears throat> dangerous. Dane, uh, Jane is dangerous? 
if Jane is dangerous, where is she? Where should we watch out for Jane? What do you see right now? I've got a strange feeling over here on my right side. Like I felt like someone was standing right next to me for a second. Is that Jane getting close to me? What was that? Can you speak so we can hear your voice? We don't mean to intrude on you. If you'd like to speak with us. Speak as loud and clearly as you can right here into this little device. Please. If you're too afraid to come in and talk to us, that's okay. We also have some purple lights on the floor out there that you can touch those too. Could you do that to let us know you're here? Oh, gosh. Yeah, that floor's kind of... I just got really dizzy, though. Really? Yeah. <gasps> Maybe that's why. Wow. Thank you so much. We'd love for you to come in and join Dave and I. Come join us. Here, we'll get out of the doorway and give you some room. Okay. I'm going to listen back to this. Right over here on this edge of this table. Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. Move it. Move it. What is that? I have no idea. That definitely sounds like a voice on this recording. It sounds almost like a woman talking. Yeah. To me. We think we may have just captured an EVP here in Electroshock Recovery. But in this moment, we can't make out what it's saying. But later, when we meet up with Jason and Dave after this session and let them hear it, we'll make a shocking discovery that may just show us how intelligent this interaction really is. It's creepy, too. It's, it's kind of breathy in a way, too. It is. It's very breathy. EDI plus. There is. There is? There is a voice on this? There is a voice on this box that you left? Funny. Funny. Huh. So far you've touched two of the three lights that we have set up. That's pretty cool. And we thank you for that. There's one more light. It's right in between me and Jason here. It's on the floor. It's blue. Can you try and touch that one? It's right here. I'm pointing at it. I tell you what. Watch this. See all those pretty lights on there? 
I'll even move it in here for you. And that way, you don't have to be afraid. Is there anyone out there? Jason also left a ball for you in there on the side of the tub. Can you try and roll that off of there for him? Can you tell us what year it is for you? We are curious what it was like for you living here at St. Albans. If Jane is dangerous, why are you here? What do we want out for always? Why are you here always? Are you tired of people coming in here and bothering you? Is that what you're saying? We're here because a lot of people have questions. If you can speak to us from where you are, we don't know if you were someone who lived before us or if you're someone who's living in this current moment in a different plane, in a different dimension from us. And we travel around looking for answers. That's why we're here. We want to tell your story. We want you to be able to tell your story. This is my place. I've got a strange feeling that we're getting on my right side. Like I saw my phone was standing right next to me for a second. Was it scary living here? If you were scared to be here, light these lights up for us, please, so we know. Dave and I would love to speak with you, hear you, but we'd love to see you. Is it possible for you to make a noise for us? I was gonna say, I just seen the light on that camera flashing. How did that die already? I have no idea. Yeah, that literally just happened. Do you think you'd be all right up here for a few minutes while I took that battery down and put it on charge? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I might just set this right here. Okay. <clears throat> just kind of have a, I'm going to pick this cat all up. Okay. I'm going to throw a new battery on this and then run down. Okay. okay. All right, I'll be back in just a minute. Okay. It's just me up here right now. Like I say, my name is Jason. What's your name? Please speak as loud and clearly as you can for me. Are you fascinated by all these toys and devices we brought? We've got one possible voice that could have been some sort of EVP or electronic voice phenomena or spirit voice. So it's kind of interesting. I mean, none of us were speaking in that moment, but yet somehow the recorder captured what sounded like a voice. 
It seems like someone here in the electroshock area is very territorial with just the responses we've gotten on Ghost to leave, please leave, this is my place, why are you here, always. Sounds like someone doesn't want visitors here in, electro in the electroshock area. I don't really feel creeped out anymore. No. I was thinking maybe we should move down. This place is huge. We should cover as much area as we can. Maybe move down to the hydrotherapy hallway. Sure, yeah. And see if there's any activity down there. Maybe that and if we don't get anything there, we can move to the alcoholics area. Mm -hmm. While we're walking by, you can say something through that box Miranda has. This right here is... Guardian. Guardian. Yeah. Is that why you keep telling us to leave and that this is your place? Do you guard? You can set that up right here, actually. If you want to put the tripod legs here. I'm sure I'll the creepy guy. <laughs> Please make a noise for me so I know that you're here with me. I love making noises. We're officially in hydrotherapy. Satan. Satan? There's a lot of people that have reported to be scratched here. There's a lot of people reported to be- Stop recording. You don't like that we're recording? Someone here is very upset with us. At least just the, none of the responses through GhostTube have been friendly since we first started when we got Jeremy and hello and I want to talk. Yeah. Since we moved into recovery, it's been nothing but leave, leave now, leave here. This right. is my place. Satan. Dangerous. Dangerous. Rebecca, are you up here? If you're up here with us, Rebecca... There's a red light right in there on the bathtub. And there's these purple lights on the floor out here. Could you try to pick either one of them up to let us know that you're here? We were told several, several ladies lost their lives in this room right here where the red light is. If one of you are here, can you try and touch that red light? All right, so we are now inside the hydrotherapy area here at St. Albans Sanatorium. This hallway. Her. Her. This hallway. How did you get here? We walked down here. Are we not supposed to be in here? The tub that they would have used for hydrotherapy is no longer here, but this is their best guess as to where the hydrotherapy would have taken place is in this area. So just another treatment that was utilized in these psychiatric asylums back in that time that they believed affected and influenced the mind. Now, of course, back then it was a lot more extreme than the types of hydrotherapies and electroshocks that they use nowadays, because those are both practices that still sometimes are utilized, but it's a lot more extreme back then. And I think it's time for us to switch back over to night vision and go dark. Stay. Ooh. You want us to stay now, huh? Play with me. Ooh. You want us to play with you? We brought a lot of fun toys. 
Stand over here, Miranda. I'm gonna point so we can get this equipment in case it goes off. I'll step out of the room since you said her. I'll let Miranda stay in that room. I'll stand here in the hallway. How about that? Listen. We're listening. Okay, I have a box right here in my hand that we think you can use to speak to us. We're gonna try and ask you to put your voice on the box. Did I just say leave? It did sound like it said that. Literally the first thing that came through sounded like a woman saying leave. Who's the lady that we that's telling us to leave? Crying. Crying? I think so. Pardon. I hear you. You hear us? Can you talk through this other box? Who's the man that we're hearing talking? Fourteen. Fourteen. Fourteen what? 1914? Is this, are you from the boys' school? Was it always this cold up here in the winter time, like it is now? Can I come in here and talk to you? If we're upsetting you and you would like for us to le just leave and leave you alone, we'll do that, but we just need to know, so... If you would like for us to go, can you try and touch either the purple or the red light one more time and we'll go. Dave and Jason captured the very clear sound of chanting on their camera's audio. This is wild, because this land was fiercely defended by the Shawnee tribe and was feared by colonists who risked invoking their wrath. This was demonstrated when Mary Draper Ingalls and her group were captured and mostly slaughtered after tensions with the tribe exploded. Did Dave and Jason just capture evidence that the spirit and energy of the Shawnee tribe is alive and well on this land? Take another listen and tell us what you think. Either the purple and the red light one more time and we'll go. There's a small green light behind Miranda on that windowsill there. Can you knock it off of there? It's who? Jack. Jack? Mm -hmm. Who is Jack? Did you hear that? What'd it say? Did it say here, like very quietly? It may have. 
Dr. King, this is your hospital. You built this with your vision. Are you here? Did you stay here? I thought that just said demon, but I could be wrong. I'll have to replay it. Something mon. Something else I find weird is that whenever we started getting voices through um, the spirit box, we stopped getting voices through ghosts too. I noticed that. I literally thought that just about 15 seconds ago, right before you said that. Yeah. Did you change ways that you're talking? Are the boys not supposed to be up here? Jason and I can both feel that you're here with us. We can feel your energy and that you're around us and that's okay. We're just here to talk with you. Is that all right? Was there a tub right here for hydrotherapy? I love it. What did that say? I couldn't make it out. I thought at first I heard five dollars, but I couldn't. Could you repeat yourself? And then... That was the same thing. Same voice in everything. Wow. The, I have chills. That freaked me out for a second. Yeah. Who is the man that we're hearing with the really deep voice? Oh. Sir, are you here with us? Can you see us? Wow. It's so close and muffled, it's hard to understand what he's saying. Yeah. Was this place hell for you? you just... Wow. That was a very clear yes. Yeah. I'm so sorry. This must have been a terrible place to be kept and stuck. Did they do horrible treatments here in these rooms? Whole lot. Whole lot. Wow. Did you hear that? Yeah. Wow, I'm so sorry to hear that. We're here. You can use my energy to talk to us or move something. We want to tell your story so that other people will come here and listen. What did they send you here for? Why did they lock you up here? Thirst. Thirst. Are you thirsty? Do you need water? Does anybody want to play a game? We can roll the ball back and forth. Here, if I roll it to you, will you try and roll it back to me? Kind of came back anyway. <laughs> I 
There we go. Your turn. Can you roll it back? Roll it back. Does it normally blink that long? No, no. There it goes. Oh, wow. That's it. That's it. Go ahead and roll it. Has a lot of pretty lights on it, huh? Can you make it light up again? How interesting. What? What's interesting? That's what I thought it said. It sounded like a man went, how interesting. Yeah. This area is really creepy. Am I dead? We're not sure. Sleeping. Sleeping. Huh. Is that what it's like? Is, is death like sleeping? You come with, you have dreams. It's the same voice. Is that what this feels like to you? Does it feel like a dream? What? I just got like, I don't know, like an overwhelming, not like, it's not like a feeling or a sense, but it's like, it felt like everything in the whole room and this whole hall shifted, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. It's weird because I'm not sensitive. I don't have any sort of abilities or anything. I don't claim to be psychic or empathic or anything, but it's just like that shift in the energy around you, kind of like you can tell when a person's attitude is off or has changed. Mm -hmm. It's that same feeling of like, you can just feel a shift in the energy. Right. I'm scared. I'm sorry that you're scared. We hope you're not scared of us. Is there something that we can do to help you not be scared? What was that? I don't know. What the f***? I heard that. That was right beside me. Was that like a shuffling on the floor? It had to have been. <laughs> that made me jump. Holy moly. That was literally Be right quiet. beside me. Yeah, that was crazy. Like, whenever I say right beside me, I mean right beside me. Yeah, I, I heard it and I knew because I was looking, I could see you out of the corner of my eye and I knew you didn't move when the sound happened. And I mm -hmm. was like, it like, that's why I jumped because I was like, oh shit, that's right beside her. Yeah. <gasps> what was that? <gasps> what was that? Who's right beside Miranda? It's Michael. <gasps> Michael? Oh, I have chills. My hair is yeah. standing up. Michael, are you a patient here? How many of you are here right now with us?
We're going to get ready and pick up our things and head somewhere else. So if you'd like to say goodbye to us, could you try touching one of these toys we set up for you? Thank you. And listen, it's okay that you didn't talk or interact with this any more than you did. We just appreciate appreciate you interacting with us at all. So thank you. Appreciate you interacting with us at all, so thank you. believe that that <laughs> that that happened like that though right no um, <clears throat> it's almost in a way like they were acknowledging what you said that it was okay that they didn't come full on out and you know but yeah I think you called it though I think that there are definitely spirits up here but they're just timid yeah yeah thank you for talking to us Michael we're going to have to move on so we can go to other places and talk to other people. You're more than welcome to follow us around the asylum, around the sanatorium, though. You can follow us. You can talk to us. Any, any place that we go inside this building, you're more than welcome to join us. And that goes for anyone that's here and that can hear my voice. We'd love to gather you all into a room and talk. We got back here and we kind of reconvened to try and find out what each of us all caught on our different sessions. And I was telling them, Jason and Dave, about the EVP that we thought we captured in the electroshock room. And if you remember, the ghost tube right before said, move it. Move it. Move it. Move what? Both Miranda and I were like, move it, move what? And that's when you hear what sounds like a voice. To me, it almost sounds like a female voice. Well, I played it for Jason. And in the moment, we didn't know what it said, being there in electroshock. But Jason, what do you think it said? So to me, it sounds like move it. But what's captured is like, move it. Like, not the M, but like, move it. So at first, it was like, is it a voice? Is it movement? But to me, after listening to it a few times, yeah, I think it's move it. So, you think it's saying the exact same thing that Ghost Tube said? Yeah. Which would be crazy because it proves that it comes through on EVP. It could possibly prove that they can use these different programs like Ghost Tube to speak because it said it through Ghost Tube and then you hear it on the recording. So, I'm going to play it right here and you guys can tell us in the comments if you hear Move It as well. Play it one more time. And there's like more emphasis on the it. Yeah. Mm hmm. Hmm. It's creepy too. It's, it's kind of breathy in a way too. It is. It's very breathy. 
And Miranda and I didn't say anything in that moment. We asked, what do you want us to move? And we're just looking at the equipment to figure out what they want us to move. And so that's pretty creepy that that came through. Of course, you know, we were feeling something in that area, just like we were feeling something in hydrotherapy. So, but with that, I think it's time for us to get started with the next session. And we have a special treat planned. The three of us are gonna be going Somewhere here in the asylum, we've yet to decide, but we're thinking it might be the isolation rooms, either the male or the female isolation rooms, while Miranda is gonna have the pleasure of going alone to the bowling alley, one of the most infamous parts of St. Albans Sanatorium, where a lot of creepy paranormal activity has been captured. So let's get this next session started. Let's do it. All right, here we are, we're in the bowling alley. And we have set up some equipment here. Miranda is stationed up inside the bowling alley, right here with a camera on her and a camera that's wide. Got some equipment all the way down, including a motion activated light, some REM pods, some other things. She has a spirit box that she can use at her discretion. You never know, this is a place. People have heard footsteps running at them down here, Miranda. I don't know if you know that. No, I didn't. So yeah, people have heard footsteps literally running at them down here. So it'll be interesting to see what you hear whenever you're down here. It will be. So, if that happens, I will scream. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to leave her down here all by herself. She wants to talk to you. Good Come luck. out. And, Thank you. Come out and talk to her, ladies. There they go. You have dark, you have outside dark, and then you have St. Olin's dark. You turn out all the lights down in the bowling alley and you find out what it's like having absolute darkness and just having an odd feeling down there. All right. It's just me down here. My name's Miranda. And I would love to talk to you. We have a bunch of different toys here that you can interact with to let me know that you're here. The red lights that are beside me and the one that's um, down that way. If you get close to them, they'll light up. And then we have some balls that if you want to roll them, they'll light up blue and red. Can you do that for me so that I know that you're here? Yeah, all of these doors have really thick locks on them. So would these all be isolation? I, I didn't think we're there yet, are we? This is the cage right here. But wait a minute though, because the isolation wings, each one had the little orderly station. Yes. Remember where they could lock themselves in? And out? Right. So this isn't it? No. The cage but I don't think this is where we want to go. No. Let's go find the... Part of the adventure of St. Albans, part of the, what St. Albans can offer folks here is... To get lost? Right, get lost, investigate, and adventure, explore, and figure out where the hell you're at. <laughs> or trying to get. Did you get to bowl here whenever it was a sanatorium? <gasps> Hello? Is there somebody down there? Make your heart race. <gasps> Hello? Did somebody down there tap? 
on something? Can you do it again? I tell you what, like, like Jason said, you walk through this place and it's just like, it's like a constant maze. You have no idea where you're going. Oh yeah, this is the women's. No, yeah. down below. No, it's, it's still not it. It's the floor below. Okay. Yeah. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> Our guide, Michael, on this floor that we're going to, we are about to find the women's isolation. And he said that he talked to a nurse that worked here and one of their first days in the job, so they got called down here to a woman who genuinely believed she was a snake and would... This is it. Is it? Yeah. And she was striking at all the orderlies here. Okay. They do have a lot of Halloween costumes spread out across this area, but... <laughs> okay. You wanna set up in here then? Yeah, might as well. My heart is still racing <laughs> from that tap. Oh. A lot of people say that I always stay very calm and I do on the outside. <laughs> I for sure get freaked out on the inside though. Is there anyone down here with me? Would you like to bowl with me? Okay, I think I'm going to run on ghost tube. Okay, rolling on ghost tube. If there's anyone down here, you can talk to this box in my hand and I should be able to hear what you're telling me. Earlier we had the name Michael come through. Michael, are you still here with us? With me? <laughs> Not used to doing this all out. <laughs> so what we have here is a proximity board. It's just like kind of like a REM pod proximity in the same way, but this has a full board, and as you pass over it, you see every single light will light up and then stay on for a certain period of time. So it's like you can track the proximity. It's a really cool piece of equipment here. Ready? Ready when you are. Let me make sure you're in the shot. All right, so Dave is set up with the seer. We got him set up. As we get set up to do a seer session, the unexplained activity has already begun. With Miranda all alone in the other building down in the bowling alley, Jason and I both hear the distinct sound of footsteps outside the isolation room. I think it glitched. Did it? Ooh. Footsteps. I heard that. Did it? Yeah. Ooh. Footsteps. Yeah. Ooh. Footsteps. I heard that. Okay. Okay. Then what? Man, there's footsteps. Was that you, Dave? I'm literally sitting down. Something was just, no, that was knocking on this door. It was literally thump, thump, thump. Okay, then what? Man, there's footsteps. Okay, then what? Man, there's footsteps. Was that you, Dave? There's someone here with us. Our friend Dave over there, who's sitting down, has a thing on his head that if you get close to it and pick words, it'll show him pictures. My name is Ryan and this is Jason.
Are there any ladies up here? The doors are open. Uh, it didn't ding, but there is a field of some sort with stuff in it. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. So just like an open field. They did have a farm here. Did you work on the farm here? What was it like for you to live in this part of the sanatorium? Did you like it? How did they treat you when you were here? Did they treat you well? If there's anyone down here, can you let me know? What the f was that? Hello? Is there someone down there? Oh, I have chills. I hear you. I hear you too. No, I'm freaked out. <laughs> Can you tell me your name? Mary. Mary. Hi, Mary. Thank you. Were you a patient here? I mean, it is something else whenever you're hearing things and you're by yourself. Ooh. Freaky. I don't mean that you're freaky. I don't mean to offend you. And thank you for letting me know that you're here. What the f was that? Hello? Generating. We've got a person lying, uh, a male lying on the floor, kind of with his legs extended out, and his left arm on his left knee. Huh. What is he does he what is he wearing? He's wearing a white shirt with black pants and he's got black hair. Looks like he might be missing his right hand up to his elbow. Huh. That's the second time through Seer we've gotten people with like hands and limbs missing. We got that at the Augusta pub too. Oh yeah. You see this purple strip of lights right here? If you walk up and down this strip of lights, it should change colors. And then we can see that you're here. Generating a cemetery with several headstones. Huh. I wonder if they have a cemetery for this place. I'm sure. Somewhere. We're sorry that you had to live here. Tell us about your life. 
earlier I heard, what I heard was movement. I don't think there's anything down there that should be moving. Um, I'm thinking like, I don't know, like a mechanical box or anything that should have made a noise like that. Oh, I hope I didn't scare them away. <laughs> I didn't mean to offend you. I think the craziest thing, too, is that I heard it twice, like once right after the other. I told him. You told him? You told who? What did you tell them? Can you tell me why you're here? Was it lonely being here? What's this room back here? Hello? Did you hear that? Something just ran its fingers across this grating. You've got to be kidding. It was so loud, it was like... <laughs> Hello? This was like the sound that I heard, it was like... Like that. Yeah, it's a very distinct sound. Wait. Who is in there with Ryan? Are you trying to get out? Generating. Oh. It is a very up close image of a skull. Just from like the, the nose, what the nose and eyes was that? Literally, as soon as I turned my back, I just heard a noise in this room to my right. What is happening? Because I heard, unless that was you, it sounded like a breath or something in there. What? It was definitely like movement. It was like dum 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 dum. Okay, I guess I heard something else. Is, is there anything we can do to help you? We step back away, maybe they're... All right, I have another box here. And if you talk to it, hopefully I'll be able to hear what you're saying. Can you tell me if anybody's here? Mary, are you still here? Can you tell me if there are any former patients? of the sanatorium here? Do they perform electroshock therapy on you? Were you locked in these rooms? Generating. We've got two women 
Looks like they're having a meal in front of a fireplace on the floor. Hmm. Huh. And one of them has a My Little Pony head. <laughs> wow. I mean, this was a an asylum. Whoa. REM pod. Hello, what's your name? That is really strong. It is. I was literally just getting ready to say, I think one of us should go into that and see if it reacts. I mean, you'd kind of look like a... Can you step back away from that? Like security or a, or a cop or with yet with that jacket. Right. Can you can you stop that, please, just for a moment? If you're here with us right now, can you make a noise? The f Was that y'all? No. No. Generate. Surely. Hello? 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 You got me. This looks like bloody flesh. What? Here, hold this for a second. I'm going to shut off this REM pod. What is going on in there? I want to hear what's going on in here, and we can't hear over this REM Hello, pod. we're coming to you. Just hang on. <sighs> what the actual f***? What's going on? I don't know. What the f*** is going on? There's something at this... I'm following you. Something at this door. Or in here. Or in here. Hello? If you're here with us right now, can you make a noise? The f Was that y'all? No. No. I've never heard anything like that. No. Are we able to open this door? I don't know. Probably not. I couldn't tell whether that was a voice or what that was. It sounded vocal in a way, so. but it sounded like it was coming from you. Yeah. Hello, if that was you we just heard, we don't mean to startle you. Can we please hear your voice again? Flowers in a field. Flowers in a field. That was real f***ing creepy. <laughs> it was really f***ing creepy. And my heart stopped. I'm like, I can't believe it was happening. Yeah. Wow. Did you ever bowl down here with your friends? Definitely heard a voice there, but I don't know what it said. Can you be more clear, please?
It sounded like a man's voice. Can you please tell me your name? Joshua. Thank you, Joshua. Joshua, can you tell me if you were a patient at the sanatorium? Joshua, can you tell me how old you are? Joshua, did you ever play bowl down here with your friends? I thought I just heard yes. How were you treated while you were here? Why did they bring you here? Maybe move the rim pot into that room. I'm just going to go ahead and say right now, that was single-handedly probably one of the creepiest things that I've experienced in a long time. <laughs> that was fucking super creepy. <laughs> and it came out of that room? Out of the bathroom. That's weird. Yeah. That was, that, that was legit freaky. I didn't even know there was a bathroom in here. Yeah. Let's reset now. Let me grab this camera. In there. Whoa. Whoa. It's already going. Hello? That's a brand new battery too. That's crazy. Who's in that room? Are we hearing you? If you need the energy from that device to communicate with us, you can take it. Oh, There's somebody in there, man. That was loud. Yeah. We're sorry if we're intruding, intruding on you. We don't intend on that. We're, that's not our intention. If you're in that bathroom because you're trying to get out through that door, I'm sorry to say it's going to be hard to do. Generating. Ooh. There's kind of like a weird creature looking thing on top of like a train trestle hmm. with a person a, like a black shadow standing on the trestle just bizarre things that are like <laughs> things you wouldn't even think of mm -mm. what was the name of that documentary Jason <laughs> something about under the trestle yeah that's exactly what I started thinking Gina are you here really Gina the documentary about Gina is called Under the Trestle? Something about Trestle, yeah. That's really creepy. What Dave and Jason are referring to is a documentary and book with the same title about Radford, Virginia's most famous homicide case. In 1980, university student Gina Renee Hall went missing. Her abandoned car was found parked under a railroad trestle. She was last known to be at the lake with Steve Epperly, who failed a polygraph test and was convicted of the crime without Gina's body ever being found. To this day, no trace of Gina Renee Hall has ever been recovered, and her case remains Virginia's only homicide conviction to occur without a body. Could this image of a man and a demonic figure on top of a railroad trestle be a reference to this grisly crime? What do you think? Gina Hall. Is that you?
Please don't be afraid of us. You know what's weird to me? That almost, what we heard in that bathroom almost sounded like crying or whimpering. Yeah, uh, it was a, just an unsettling. I didn't care for that too much. Yeah. I heard they did some horrific things to people here. Do they do any of that to you? I think I heard yes. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that. They should never have done those things to you. All right, so we have four cameras set up throughout St. Albans Sanatorium, and we are gonna leave them set up alone for about an hour to see what they capture when St. Albans is completely empty. Right now we're in the hydrotherapy area where Miranda and I had some creepy activity earlier. We also have a camera in the men's isolation unit. We just investigated the women's isolation unit, but the men's is supposed to be active too. We also have a camera upstairs pointed into the bathroom where they say was the most common place in the asylum for people to take their own lives. Yes. They know of five people that supposedly, that they know of, that met their end inside that bathroom. Now yeah. there's, what's that last hallway? We just found a random long hallway on the floor below that. It was patient rooms, I believe. I'm not exactly sure what, but it looked really creepy. It felt right. <laughs> so we set up a camera there. You guys ready? I'm ready. You ready, Jason? Absolutely. All right. Relieving. Way too dramatic. <laughs> All right. Let's you go. Make to. sure that focuses out. That way. This way. Yeah. Yep, looks good. Okay.
Wow, y'all. It is cold. Cold, cold, cold now. What a night, though. What a night here at St. Albans Sanatorium in Radford, Virginia. Come check this place out, y'all. It's so cool. You guys saw what we captured on all of our sessions between the creepy stuff that you heard on your first session, the interesting responses and strange things that happened to Miranda and I, the creepy noises Miranda heard while she was alone in the bowling alley, and those bizarre and chilling sounds that we heard in the women's isolation unit. And who knows what we got during this abandonment. This place surprised us and we are very, very happy that we finally got a chance to come here to St. Albans. Oh yeah. What do you think, Jason? What are your thoughts on this investigation? Fantastic. Couldn't ask for a better night. Uh, you know, maybe a map. <laughs> <laughs> Literally us running around trying to find where we set up these abandonment cameras. It was probably pretty comical and too bad we didn't have a camera to document that because they were all set up alone in here. Yeah. But this has been a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. If you made it this far, make sure you put down in the comments, I am a stan for Jason McKinney. Oh! And we want you to hit the like button to help us out. It helps push the video into the algorithm and it helps people who are interested in the paranormal find our content. It sure does. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel because we got a lot more coming for you in the new year. So many cool locations, so many adventures awaiting us and awaiting you to watch here on YouTube. Oh yeah, if you like ghosts, subscribe to this channel. Until next time, guys. Stay safe, and we'll see you in the next adventure at the next location on this paranormal quest. Bye. <laughs>